Hello everyone, I'm Akif and today we will be discussing about what is Constrained Application Protocol or CoAP and in another video we will be doing some Kuja simulations. Now before we get started I will like to request you that you should go through the concept of HTTP and TCP because only then you will be able to understand this video better. Now what is Constrained Application Protocol? The name itself suggests that it's an application layer protocol. So why was there a need to come up with a protocol when we have already some existing protocols like HTTP? The answer to this lies in the fact that in um, coming future we will have this issue of heterogeneity where there will be a lot of devices with different uh, resources w with different constraints and specifications on internet there will be low power devices with a limited bandwidth with limited resources uh, and all these devices uh, are work with different protocols and then there are already existing devices which have uh, good specifications like good memory uh, good RAM and all these resources so we have to connect them all together uh, through a common uh, protocol so for that for binding them together uh, there was this need and IETF which is Internet Engineering Task Force did that they designed this protocol which is called Constrained Application Protocol and when we discuss about wireless protocols they fall in three, three categories one is the physical or MAC layer in it we have protocols like IEEE 802.11 and IEEE 802.15.4 which was initially uh, used while referring to ZigBee now we use it for any low power wireless personal area network and in the net, uh, network communication layer we have IPv6 and IPv4 and we have uh, touched it slightly in the uh, video where we discussed about the transition from IPv4 to IPv6 we have discussed in detail about uh, RPL, Routing Protocol for loss, Low Power and Lossy Networks. We have discussed about Micro IP or UIP and there is also a separate video on 6 Low Pan which is IPv6 or on Low Power Wireless Personal Area Networks. So you can go through the, that if you are really interested. Then in the application layer we, uh, we already are aware a bit about HTTP and today we will be discussing about CoAP. Now, if you look at the TCP IP protocol stack, we have this application layer which is just about the uh, tr transport layer. And we have in the transport layer protocols like TCP and UDP. And IoT uses them both, but it's much more comfortable with UDP. Uh, the answer to uh, this lies uh, in the very definition of the, uh, the, the TCP and UDP. TCP and UDP, they are different. UDP is connectionless whereas TCP is connection oriented UDP uh, doesn't care that much about the reliability whereas TCP is designed only for reliability where we have we where they take uh, TCP takes care of packet reordering it takes care of the uh, duplication if the duplication happens it uh, does uh, sense that then we have uh, uh, some missing data it uh, tackles that uh, but UDP is not all about that uh, UDP is the best effort delivery wh which is like sending a letter to your friend and then hoping the most that it will reach while as in TCP we have this acknowledgement and then uh, there is this reliability so HTTP is basically based on TCP which, I which is connection oriented so in connection oriented we, we mean it involves three-way handshaking which is that a client or a host wants to connect to the server you can look at the uh, bottom right corner of their screen there's the sin there's the sin act act and establishment which means the connection is established we are ready to send the data now that's uh, not the only issue there are uh, competition competition complexity there's lo low data rate and high energy consumption in HTTP. Now to get rid of these problems, uh, IETF came up with numerous protocols like uh, Embedded Binary Hypertext Transfer Protocol, 
AB HTTP, then we have Lean Transport Protocol, and finally this Go App. So today we'll be discussing about Go App. So when you look at the structure of the Go App, it is uh, like uh, the, you can look at the right side of the screen. Uh, we have the application layer, the request response layer, message layer, and UDP. So it's a request response protocol along with message structure. And uh, when you look at the message part of this tag, it is uh, it, it deals with the asynchronous interaction, interaction with uh, con, uh, non-con, ACK, and reset. And what that is, we will be discussing it shortly. Now, the types of messages uh, th that the message layer supports is conformable, which is con, non-conformable, which is non, and then we have ACK, and which is acknowledgement and reset. So, when you want the reliability, in that case, uh, we make the use of conformable. When reliability is not a big issue, then we use non-conformable. And uh, it is responded back with acknowledgement. And if something goes wrong, uh, a reset is used. Then we have uh, the request response part so it uh, m the message layer it's uh, actually uh, meant for retransmitting uh, of the lost packet and uh, request response part uh, has got these methods which is called guest get put post and delete they are used to access the resource and resource is where we have the sensor in iot now if you look at we discussed about some of the uh, uh, some of the messages like con non uh, confirmable acknowledgement and reset so that's that's how it works for example there's this client it has to make a request to the server it makes a request via con it has an id which is 123 for example maybe to get to, to get the information related to light and the server on the other hand replies back with ACK and here you can see the uh, ID remains the same then uh, what happens if uh, the uh, uh, acknowledgement is not provided back with uh, within a given time uh, if, uh, if the time runs out or there's this timeout conformable there's this uh, request which is called CON it doesn't uh, the server doesn't respond back within a time so uh, it uh, again starts uh, from uh, the very beginning it sends the con again uh, the id remains the same and it's responded with the ACK now there is this separate response the client makes a request via con uh, or using the con a message uh, and The server is still uh, adjusting the light, which means that it's not able to respond to the client immediately because it's still in the process of adjusting the light. So it responds back with something uh, which is called an empty ACK. So it responds with uh, empty ACK, and while and when the time reaches where they have adjusted the light, where the server has adjusted the light, it starts the con message from its end it uh, it requests with this con message and then there is this act uh, now what about the uh, reliability part what about the uh, part where we have the packet loss and reordering and what about authenticity integrity and confidentiality in that case this uh, U UDP makes use of a DTLS which is data transport layer security on the other hand, if they are using uh, TCP, then uh, they make the use of TLS uh, for security. So this is how CoAP uh, deals with the security part by using DTLS. Now there are some t terms that are related to uh, CoAP. One can think of CoAP as a replacement for HTTP uh, model, but it's not uh, so. CoAP in itself is a very clean IoT protocol. Uh, it's a new protocol. Uh, 
there may be some aspects of co-op that are similar to HTTP, but it's not a replacement. HTTP is based on REST, and uh, REST is all about uh, getting access to the resources uh, or using URIs. And uh, REST stands for Representational State Transfer. Now, client accesses uh, resources with uh, methods like get, put, post, and delete. Uh, so what happens when we have uh, a co-app based device uh, uh, interacting with another co-app based device? So they use co-app directly. Uh, if, if they want to uh, uh, work with HTTP, they make the use of proxy. You can look at the uh, figure on the right side. So co-app is, they, the co-app based device, they interact directly. And if they have to interact with uh, work with HTTP they make the use of uh, proxy so wh what does pro proxy behave like it behaves like a server to a client so pro proxy behaves like a server to a client and it behaves like a client to a server now just like an uh, just like a URS scheme uh, in HTTP uh, there is this uh, scheme for co-app also which is co-app colon slash slash then uh, if it is a security uh, based co-app then we have co-app s uh, and the scheme goes like that uh, then yeah we discussed about the proxy how uh, when it works with HTTP for example there's this HTTP based client uh, it has to make a request to uh, the server where which is actually working on co-app and has got a uh, sensor so it requests using get and there's this proxy it translates it into con and the server responds with ack uh, and this is again translated into uh, the message that could be understood by the http based device so that was all for today. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.